We're going to open the file. It's just not open. Okay, so if somebody is asking that the form hasn't converged, okay, I will rerun the calculation on my. Um, so one one thing that I need to uh, we can I can try to walk you through the tutorial in the beginning, and then uh, I, I there is a good chance that you are not going to be able to finish this tutorial in one hour. It may take a bit longer, although we try to reduce the uh, the parameters to values that should. <laughs> Take just a few minutes to <clears throat> to calculate. So uh, hopefully everybody knows by now how to get to um, to this uh, file. Yeah. So if you haven't done it, you can uh, clone it, and then you need to go into this directory where you have day five pm one epw. So I'm already uh, there in my case. Oh, sorry, not anymore. Okay, I need to reconnect. Just give me a few minutes while I reconnect. So th th this uh, tutorial really takes you from the beginning. So initially, you will need to uh, to get everything from Quantum Espresso. Yeah. So the first step will be to run an SEF calculation in order to generate the charge density. So this is uh, hopefully uh, you are familiar with Quantum Espresso, but right now, if you are not, it doesn't matter. You only need to, to run the job. And then um, this input file is to perform a phonon calculation. So in this case, we are using a very small mesh of only two by two by two. So, okay, I'm gonna first just do this. Let's see how long it's gonna take. In my... Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and then um, I'm also gonna submit the phonons. Okay, I am leaving it on the screen so everybody can see. So I, I don't know, but uh, somebody in the forum was saying that it takes very long. So you can see it's very fast for me. It's, uh, it's already at the six mode out of nine. But again, this is a very small uh, Q mesh. So these calculations are not by any far, uh, any way converged. Yeah, so it's just to, to be able uh, to. To get something running. So in this case, for a two by two by two mesh, we should only have to calculate four Q points. Yeah. So with every uh, each of these four Q points, we are going to have uh, nine moles. Since this is MGB2, there are three atoms in the unit cell. I hope this is my last Q point.
talking about so much. And so right now you can see that um, we have this um, this uh, uh, directory ph not yeah for people that are not familiar with uh, quantum espresso and for each q point we will have so for the first point the gamma point this is the deformation potential file that i was talking about yes, so this is the dbscs and then for all uh, the uh, other points uh, three points you will have the same type of file inside this subdirectory. So if you go here in MGB Q2, there is um, you will find another DBSCF uh, file. Yeah, so this is MGB2 DBSCF. So in order to uh, to provide this information to EPW, we need to uh, to collect all these uh, uh, files with the deformation potential and also with the dynamical matrices and this can be done very easily using this Python script so yeah so you just need to do uh, take this line if you do it it should ask sorry you didn't copy the right file I'm gonna do it again and then it's going to ask for the name. So in this case, the seed file is MGB2. Yeah. And then uh, if you will see here that there is a new directory that was created, the save directory. And in this, it, we have collected the, uh, the DBSCF, so the potentials, yeah, the, all this MGB2 underscore Q1, and also the dynamical matrix files. And also here in the last directory, I think we have the pattern files. I go here. So we have the, the pattern, so the dynamical matrix with the pattern files. Yeah, so these are basically things that are um, needed for EPW uh, calculations. So now uh, the first step uh, before running uh, EPW is that we need to have some information for the Vanier uh, 90. So in order to do this, we need to run one nonsense, non nonsense, non self consistent calculation on the dash uh, uh, sorry fine k mesh that you are going to use for the vanillization. Yeah. So in this case again, the mesh is not. The dense is a six by six by six uniform k mesh. Yeah, so this is the the same you you have already done things like this. Oh uh, yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, no, I already answered that question. Yeah. Um, and again, I am gonna going to copy and do it on the screen so everybody can see. Right now, I'm only doing the an NSCF. This should be very fast. Because the seed is there. The seed is there. Like oh, okay. Just to remove it. Okay, let oh, me you can close leave it. it. You can leave it. I see, I see. Okay. Okay. So it's not in front. Oh, because I removed it from my screen. Huh? I removed it from my screen. I didn't yeah, yeah, realize it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now we have all information from Quantum Espresso that we need in EPW. Now we have calculated the eigenvalues. This will be uh, required for the Vanier library. And we have also uh, found the phone. So we have basically, now we can finally do EPW calculation. So, um, so in this case, as I said, there are uh, quite a lot of input flags. So it will follow the same style, style as in, uh, in Quantum Espresso. So this is the prefix that you also use in your calculation for uh, uh, guys, uh, reduce a bit the sound there. Uh, Stefan is not uh, hearing me, or I can. Uh, um, so you, you you need to use the same uh, prefix that you use in uh, uh, quantum espresso calculations. And one important thing that you shouldn't forget: you need to provide a path to where you have the DBSCF files. Yeah. So this here. Is the path to your um, to your uh, this directory where you remember that I saved the the team matrices and the DBSCF so the potentials. Yeah, because if you give here the wrong path, the code is going to crash. I think it provides an error message, but that's uh, something you need to keep in mind. 
And uh, here we, we are just telling the code uh, run and if you, if you double do uh, electron calculations. Uh, then, okay, these are just for historical reasons that we started and let's say it more or less the same. Uh, and this flag here, it just says the very first time when you do it, uh, you are going to write the uh, electron phonon matrix element in the binary representation on the file. And this is useful if you want to restart your calculation. And uh, so in the beginning, this needs to be true and read needs to be false. Some of these flags are going to change probably in the fall when we are going to have a new version of the code uh, released, but for now it's going to work uh, with, with the current version. And here we are just saying, telling the code to do, uh, basically do a binarization. Yeah? So again, if this is the first uh, run of ETW, Vanier, uh, this flag needs to be true. If you already have the vanierized electron form matrix elements, this needs to be uh, turned off to false, or otherwise you are going to repeat again the binarization. Yeah, nothing will happen that you will spend time on the binarization. And M band sub here, this index is really the number of binary functions that you are going to use. Yeah, this may not be the same, and in most cases, it's not the same as your full number of bands. Yeah, that's the same as in, uh, in the binary. And then uh, the way that we provide information to uh, to the Vanier library. So we have a few flags that we, we, we can read them, but then a lot of flags we use to this. Uh, so these are the projections. There are a lot of things uh, we use. Okay, I don't see that it's in this file, but we have an array for W data. Uh, and there you can provide the path and uh, other things, other, other parameters for uh, Vanier library. Now, uh, uh, FSTIC, you already seen this, uh, the name of this uh, input flag in uh, somewhere. So this is the Fermi window, yeah, around the Fermi level. So whatever value I put here, this is gonna be plus and minus, yeah. So the Fermi window effectively is 0 0.4, the electron volts, yeah, 0 0.2 uh, below and 0 0.2 above the Fermi uh, window. And this is a smearing that is used for the delta functions for the electrons. Yeah, and when we have this uh, delta E and K minus yeah, this is the this uh, smearing that we use. Um, and th these are just additional things if you want to, to plot. Um, the one important thing currently for when you solve the Yadber equation is that you need since this uh, the solving the superconductivity equation is very expensive and usually you, are, you cannot do it in the same run. You will need to restart. We run, we write the electron phonon matrix elements on file. And these are the electron phonon matrix elements on the fine mesh, yeah, whatever mesh that we have used. Uh, again, these are flags just to turn on the uh, superconductivity calculation, the answer true. And then here I specify that I'm doing an anisotropic. So we solve them anisotropically. There is also uh, um, you can also solve them isotropically, and then it will be an iso. And here, any mod means that you are going to solve them on this imaginary frequency axis. And then alpha D, it means that you are going to also perform an analytic continuation to the real axis using the process. And this is the number of iterations in the self consistency for, uh, for solving the equations. That's a threshold. This WS cut is the cutoff in the Matsubara frequency. And as I said, usually you take it about at least five times the largest phonon frequency. And this is this new star parameter, the, uh, the semi empirical uh, Coulomb cell potential. And here you would specify, here I will in this example right now, we are just doing two, but at how many temperatures you need to, to solve this equation. Yeah, so here I, I already know what. Result I need to get. Yes, yeah, so here I am just specifying 10 and 20. But in general, you, you need to have some idea about what critical temperature, and then the code uh, um, gives a simple estimate using um, a Macmillan formula. I didn't provide it uh, in my talk for that. And here we just give the mesh. Yes, yeah? so this is the original force meshes. This mesh is the exact same mesh that you on which you did the NSCF calculation, yeah, the one for the vanierization. 
And this is the mesh on which the phonon calculation was done. Yeah, so this is the Q mesh. You remember it was two cube, and here it was 60. And these are the fine meshes on which you are going to uh, calculate the superconducting properties. Yeah, so in this case, again, as for transport, one thing that I forgot to mention to this is done so consistently. We need to have that the Q mesh and K mesh are commensurate, otherwise the code is going to stop. It's not going to work. And if you have this flag true, it means that it's going to only use the K point in the irreducible Brillouin zone. Yeah, so this is going to significantly speed up your uh, calculations yeah? because if the system has a high symmetry, it will reduce the, the number of K points quite uh, considerably. Yeah, so now we can start this run. Yes, I'm going to copy this line. And now I'm going to start this calculation. Let's see if there are questions in the forum, in the chat. Yeah, so initially this this part is calculating you see it's even writing is calculating the MN, uh, first the mn then the mnn uh, and then it did the vanierization also now it has finished the vanierization and now this part is it's calculating the electron phonon matrix elements from the coarse grid yeah so this are it used to it will be on four q points that that was the number of q uh, of irreducible q points that we had on this Two cubes mesh. Okay. I would go up to some shit. It's working. Somebody was saying that for them the calculation of points. Yeah, I, no, I don't know. I mean, you saw it for two minutes. Yeah. And uh, five seconds. So, I think the break is at the uh, quarter to four. It's a break, but then you, you have to you have more, you know, you have uh, from four to five. But, but this is uh, somewhere. Okay. Yes, so three for the so it's half an hour more. Okay, okay. this one probably my question. Um, you know, in the literature, uh, some literature they discuss, you know, the S wave, the P wave, uh, so oh, this, is this is also S wave, even though we call this broken back to get of pi and sigma. Okay, but this is, you know, it's all within the S wave, because whatever is beyond this wave is not PCS, it's not the length of form, you know. It's, uh, okay, okay, I'll just. Okay. So all of this is a way. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 that's a good point. I forgot to mention. <laughs> no. Thanks. See you. See you later. Okay. So I think the calculation is finished here. So I see that the number of files have been um, have been creating some are for plotting, but the Okay, uh, so here in this document, I'm not going to read everything, but it basically it explains what every file uh, contains. So as I said, um, the electron phonon matrix elements are written to file, and this is like right now we did only two temperatures, yeah. But in principle, you may need to do more uh, temperatures, and you you want to restart. So then 
it's use it's a good i mean it's useful to have this information available so you don't have to start start the calculation again from more or less from scratch yeah because this is the part that takes quite a lot to, to evaluate the little form and its elements on the on the fine mesh and one thing to, you need to keep in mind that if you restart you will need to use the exact same number of processors that you used when you created this uh, this file and the reason for this that you will see you will save if we go in this directory there are as many files as, uh, as uh, uh, number of processors so yeah so here i'm i have used mpran four so i have used four processors so there will be four files so if you restart the calculation you need to restart it on four otherwise the, the code is not going to work and this other file uh, egnv this contains the idle values uh, and this uh, frec contains the phonon frequency and this ik map some information about the symmetry yeah, the uh, folding of k plus q on, on k now um, that's uh, we already seen this. That's how it was calculated. Um, that's what we, we are not going to do right now, but uh, in principle, uh, this cube file can be used with uh, with uh, Vesta or with Fermi Surfer to produce uh, the uh, Fermi, uh, the gap on the Fermi surface. If you remember in my presentation, I had a plot that uh, Samuel did a long time ago with Vesta. I think now this is much easier to do it with Fermi Surfer. And for Fermi Surfer, you are only going to read the files, but if you want to do it with Vesta, uh, there is some explanation at the end. And uh, um, I think you can find still on YouTube an old uh, uh, video by uh, recorded by Samuel explaining all the steps of uh, working with uh, Vesta. And uh, uh, I am just rewriting here the equations. So I think one useful quantity is the uh, I like usually to look at is this lambda and k uh, because this can give you you can do this without calculating the other areas that uh, solving the other areas the equation so you can get an idea a bit about the uh, an isotropy in your system so for instance if I look I think there is a plot here if I look at this plot for mgb2 uh, these are similar plots that you should get today yeah not very convert but these are some uh, nicer plots if you look here, this is the uh, this lambda and k. So you can see that there are lambda concentrates in two regions which are well uh, separated. So that's kind of an indication that most likely uh, your uh, superconductor will, will, will have two gaps. Yeah, if you see such a large, uh, uh, let's say, split between uh, in lambda, that's a, that's an indication. Yeah, and. Um, and that can give you an idea if you need to calculate, an, uh, let's say, an isotropic properties, or you can just go uh, get, uh, go along and uh, do an isotropic calculation, which can be done. Basically, you only need this ADH spectral function. Yeah? You you can even take this from quantum expressor, for instance, for instance, and uh, you can run it in serial, and that's basically a couple of minutes, and you can get the, uh, get the gap. That's really really cheap. Um, other files that um, uh, so as I said, if you if you don't have any idea about uh, what uh, value you need for the uh, for the temperature, the code in the very beginning provides an estimate based on Allendine's uh, formula. So you can in principle, and this can be done. Or, uh, and in fact, I think this is done um, even if you don't. Uh, I think this is also done even if you just write the uh, look at the lambda. I, I don't think you need to run uh, any Eliash band calculation at all. Yeah, so you will get this, you will get an idea of your PC, and that can be an idea of what values you, sh you should uh, you should provide to the code. Um, and as I said, if you want to do an analytic continuation, my recommendation is to use PADE because it's very cheap this will require uh, a lot of memory and it's uh, and basically you need to solve the equations iteratively again you know, on the real axis and um, 
Again, here is the list of quantities that are plotted. In this case, there are a number of files that will be uh, provided. So this uh, MG2 lambda k pairs, for instance, I said this is one file that I find very useful, will give you uh, this plot here. Um, this one lambda pairs just basically gives you this uh, anisotropic element. And, uh, and basically, this is just a measure of how many elements from the whole pool would have, let's say, lambda values of about 0 0.5. Yeah, so that, that's, um, and then this last file, this is just the Eliash per spectral function, isotropic Eliash per spectral function. And this is the integrated lambda. And, that's, uh, and when you estimate this critical temperature based on the uh, Allendine formula, all you need is this value of lambda. So with all this, I think that's basically uh, the first run. Now, once you have some idea about the superconductivity, you can uh, also plot the superconducting gap. So for this, you are going to have a bunch of files with this name where XX is going to be the temperature. Yeah? So if I look here in the, the code, you will see that I have uh, these files in GB2. And here we, we did a calculation of two temperature. So 10 and 20. In fact, that's the sort of files that you have got. Sorry, we get not. These are just for restarting uh, 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 options. And uh, uh, if you are going to do the analytic continuation with Pade, you are going to have an extra file that will have this uh, uh, subscript Pade. If you will do it with analytic continuation, you'll have even more files. So you need to be careful because these files are pretty large. So um, you shouldn't write all of them. And um, if you are going to plot, I'm not going to do it now, but if you are going to plot, let's say uh, your file, uh, this file is uh, 10 Kelvin. In this current uh, run that we just have, you should generate a plot like this. You see that it's not very well Define there the the spread almost this band or this band. If you are going to do it on a denser, denser mesh, you will see that the two gaps are more isolated, and this one comes from the the pi, and this is going to come from the, the sigma bands, yeah, the, the electronic sigma bands. And the uh, so this is as a function of imaginary uh, imaginary frequency. You see that there is no structure, and that's why. If you want to get some structure and some spectral representation after the, like for instance, to calculate the quasi particle density of states in the superconducting state, we need to go to real space. And, and if you then use the files, you can create, let me go here, um, you will get something like this, a flow like this. And this is, so you can compare it against experiments that show channeling data of quasi-particle density of states. And you see here that you'll have two peaks, one that corresponds to the lower gap and uh, one uh, this peak that will correspond to the higher gap in NGP2. So yeah, I'm just jumping between different plots, but just to get you to give you an idea what uh, kind of quantities you are um, getting here. So as I said, in order to do a star calculation, if you want to uh, either maybe you want to plot uh, or to get, to get the gap at some temperature for plotting to write these cube files, because in general, I wouldn't recommend writing them during the round since they are very, uh, very large. And then you are going to write a file at every temperature. You may probably are going to be interested just that in the low temperature limit, at your lowest temperature, uh, then you can just do it by, by rereading, uh, uh, doing a restart calculation. So what you uh, will have to do in that case, you see right now I have a dual restart. I already have calculated all this, so I'm putting in the force. In fact, this doesn't matter if it's really, it's not going to do anything. Um, because I put all these other flags false. Uh, and then vanillization is also false. And then you need to have this extra flag for reading, it is in a mag underscore true. And the code basically, and you need to have the file for the first temperature that you are providing in this list. Yeah, so the first 
So in other words, you need to have this file that I'm just highlighting here, emag underscore and ISO and the temperature that is the first temperature in this, uh, in this list. If you don't have this, the code is going to stop saying that it's missing uh, the file because it provided emag read. Yeah. If you want to start without starting from a previous temperature, you don't have this slab, that's okay. And then if you start the calculation with a with a guess for the gap based on the BCS formula, and it will be the temperature that you are in you are you have to do this here is the first temperature. Yeah. Um, and then the calculation proceeds exactly as, as before. So then do this now. Let me just copy. And you can see we have added a few more temperatures. If there is a temperature larger than the gap, the code is going to stop before and it's not going to do it. Yeah, so. Uh, that's what you see. That. I mean, these are not. Um, so now, the, uh, of course, this is way off. Yeah, and I mean, this, this plot is by no means converse, but this takes hours and you will need a few. Um, yeah, maybe even a few hundred courses or so. It's, there is no way we can run this, this job here. But uh, what we are plotting here from this um, ng emag and ISO file, this basically extracts the from all the spots here, it's basically uh, the gap in the zero frequency link. Yeah, so it's basically this first thing. And that's what you were. Um, super yeah. yeah. So you do that at every temperature, and then you get this plot of gap as a function of t. And as I said, uh, where the when the gap becomes zero, this is the critical temperature in your uh, superconductor. Now, these calculations, the anisotropic thing, I should warn you: if you have a, a superconductor with very low Tc, will be very uh, very expensive. Like most of the time, you cannot go uh, and calculate below like two Kelvin. Yeah? And the reason for that is that low is lower the TC, more Matsubara frequencies you are going to have for a specific color. Yeah, because of the expression, I don't think I have here this, um, this thing, but I omega J is basically 2n plus 1 T. So smaller the T, denser the mesh for a specific uh, color. Yeah, so it becomes very hard to calculate, and you will need a lot of memory if your uh, temperature is very low. On the other hand, it's nice that in the hydrides, the temperature is very high, so these calculations are relatively cheap because they have uh, TC of most of them of uh, above 100 Kelvin. And here, just a few more other things that I said that you can plot the superconducting quasi particle density of states. Once you have done the analytic continuation, you basically uh, the code evaluates this formula. And that's um, this file contains again the quasi dose at every uh, temperature. Mm -hmm. And if you want uh, optional, okay, this is a time limit. You can, I'm not sure if here we can, we should do this, but in principle, you can try to increase your fees and uh, you can do uh, redo the calculation and see how the convergence is going. But I, I wouldn't recommend to do it on four processors here. They can also change the Coulomb parameter, as I said, and you can uh, look a bit more. And uh, uh, I'm not going to go through to this example, but as I said, um, you can also run the isotropic case. This can be done uh, very simply on a single processor. Once you have this file for the Elias spectral function, 
it doesn't have to be produced necessarily with EPW. You can produce this file with quantum espresso on the, uh, let's say, on the mesh that you have calculated in the phone. Yeah, and if you, if you use that, that file, you can run the isotopic uh, calculations. Yeah. And in this case, for MGB2, of course, if you are going to calculate the gap with the isotropic thing, you only get one gap where you don't uh, get that the, the MGB2 is uh, two gaps superconducting. And here, just a few more things about the starting options. I already said that this requires to use the same number of cores as the original run. Yeah, that, that's very important. And um, you, uh, for the restart, you need basically these files. You need, um, if you start, so there are different options at which point you are going to restart. Uh, if you didn't have enough time, maybe allocated time, to finish writing the electron phonometric elements on the fine mesh, then in that case, you, you, you can restart the calculation. And for this, you are going to need to require this file that are highlighted here. Uh, I think this is old already. We don't think we have the MM. Yeah. So we need all these files that are, um, that, are, uh, that are provided here. And then um, for this, that's these are the input, the flags uh, the, uh, that need to be set up uh, in the uh, uh, in EPW. Yeah. So first of all, you will need to read the EPMAD VP. So this means that you read the electron phonometric element in the uh, elements in the Bandier representation. Um, and it's going to start recalculate just the ones on the fine mesh that have not been calculated in our previous run. And uh, on the other hand, if you already have the electron phonometric elements on the fine grid, yeah, if you have this, you can uh, restart by using this file, and this will be when you, you, you go directly to your superconductivity calculation. And this uh, directory, you will have the following files that I already showed. Yeah, you will have besides the electron phonometric files, you are going to have these three um, three additional files. Yeah, and that's the way that you need to set up the flags anymore. Yeah, you need to make this false. You are not uh, going to write them anymore. In fact, even if you have them true, if the code finds that they exist, they are not going to. It's not going to be uh, going to recalculate them. And finally, um, additional information that is provided here, as I said, how, uh, how to plot the superconducting gap using VESTA. You see that there are a number of steps that need to be, to be done. And if you do it, that's a, a, a nice plot that, as I said, there is also a tutorial on how, uh, how to uh, do this with, uh, with VESTA and how to color it. And uh, from this point on, the, the, uh, this information can also be found on our website, but this is a description of the variables related to the superconductivity calculations. Questions? So this is the gap function for each band and each code one. Yes. Okay, so then like we can kind of after like analyze which which has the highest contribution to the to the gap function, right? Yes. Yeah. 
I see, yeah. So basically, that also brings me to the next question. Like, in principle, this is now only calculated for the bands that you created by the function. Exactly. Right? Yes. So, but this also means that you could afterwards do some kind of projection mm -hmm. on the line functions, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, in principle, right now, you see it already because the Fermi service. That pockets and sheets are probably formed by specific operators. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, then so it's usually, then we, then it's yeah, we kind of even have pockets. Yeah. So, but it is, but yeah, it looks like that. I should try to combine this with what I mean. When we do it, uh, I mean, we also calculate basically the. Unfortunately, not that But we also we also calculate the anomalous part of the set of the of the green function, right? There are several ways we do it. In this paper, we did it in cluster DMT to get like the. Uh, the spatial correlations, but this is like, and then the other one is just to uh, like spin pairing, uh, like, um, uh, yeah, like some spin pairing, spin fluctuations that induce the pairing, and it would be nice like to compare both to see like where the position temperatures in case. Yeah, I wonder in the beginning if you could just auto adjust that. You could do like a gene, you could construct the, the, the W screen from the tension from the computer. Uh, 
two parts of the photo. And then you do my big theorem and you separate them into products of tools. And I and I show that this uh work of a formal is in public symbol. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like, yeah. you can have to pick it up. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't but I guess what he says is not statement, correct? Like you should write it down and have some device to device equation and then you just, for example, the people the construction, you can also show that this vertex is going to be there, it's like this theorem, it's a basis of the and then you have only the construction. Yeah, and there is also like a nice connection with the of the They also like the main function of product propagation and evaluation of the administration And they say in one of these papers from the 60s that this is connected to the superconductivity. And this is connected to the superconductivity, which are kind of two cases of the thing. And that's why I was interested in that because it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I have trouble in the city. Well, but like, yeah, so in this, in the tricks lab, we as well have this called TPF. But it's of course of the type of modern system, so you three should call all of this or something. So it's not for other issues. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's the coffee break now. Just say that. Well, we are going to take a break uh, of uh, half an hour. 15, 15, for, 15, minutes. 15 minutes for the coffee break. So we'll return at, at four. Uh, four. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll, I'll uh, shut that down. Yeah. 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 